Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sprites Alive tutorial. This week we're going to take a look at the compiler and what it can do to increase the speed of your programs. So we can see here this is our basic program that we've been working on and we've got um, <clears throat> a very simple sort of game going on where the player can fly around in any direction, they can shoot in any direction and an enemy is just going to keep spawning in and if the player gets hit they die otherwise the enemy dies and then respawns. Okay, so let's run that. And we can see there. And pew, pew. And then I get hit. And we go back to the start. Okay, so that's all right. But suppose that we start to put in more enemies start to have some more logic going on, the program's going to slow down. But what we can do with Sprites Alive is we can run a compiler on our code. Now, unfortunately we can't just put the basic code straight in, but we are able to modify the code without too much trouble. So let's start by taking out the line numbers because uh, the compiler doesn't need those. So that's the first thing I'll do here. Okay, so we now have our program but without any line numbers, so it's no longer a basic program. So I will resave this as an SRC program. <coughs> which stands for source. Okay, so a few things that we can get rid of is we don't need to use the erase and draw commands because the compile program is going to have the drawing file built into it. But what we will do is we'll put in a label here saying start. <coughs> so instead of line numbers, we use these dot labels in our program. Now mode zero, we can leave the same. Wherever we've got one of these RSXs, the uh, extensions added by Sprites Alive, <coughs> then what we can do is take that off. Okay. And the other thing is that we don't need to use the first comma there because it's now going to be interpreting this command directly in the compiler there. Okay, so I'm going to go through and take out these uh, pipe characters and commas. Alright, the next thing that we need to look at is that variables in the compiler uh, can only have names that are either a single letter or a single letter followed by a single digit. So instead of E status we're going to just say E and instead of A percent we're just going to say A because that is going to be <coughs> always an integer. We don't need to put the percent there. Okay now this will take a while so let's speed this up. Okay, now we'll put in some labels here. This is going to be game start. This is where we'll go back to when the player dies. And this one is going to be main loop. So the game will continually loop back to here. <coughs> now the next thing we need to look at is any command which is move or move all we need to put s move all. That's because there's a basic command which is move and it's not going to know which is which there. Okay now another thing um, <coughs> is that we can't do and in if commands here. So what we can do is we'll move this line under there. So 
So first we'll check if the enemy has spawned. If it is, then we want to do a go sub button instead of 2000, we're calling this enemy check. <clears throat> and then after this, we'll go back to the main loop. So that means if E status is zero or if E is zero, then it's going to go to this next line so we can actually take out the AND component there. And after an if statement, we need to put an end if. Okay, so the next thing is that we can't do if this random here because of the way that the uh, <clears throat> if statements work, you can't put a, um, like a function in here. So we'll start off by giving a random value to a variable, which we call t. And then we're gonna say, if t is more than 250. Now when we do rnd in the compiler, it's always gonna be a value from zero to 255. So we'll then need to change that value in some way if we want to do things like uh, when we're spawning the enemies, that kind of stuff. But in this case, we can just say if it's more than 250 and sort of saying go sub. <clears throat> ah, sorry, I forgot the other thing is that instead of saying then, we just do this. And we'll say enemy spawn will be the name our function to spawn an enemy and end if and then say so go back and say so go to your main loop okay so now let's have a look at our enemy spawn so again we can't do these uh, <coughs> compound sort of things here to make the random number. So I'm just going to copy and I've already worked this one out. So I'm going to say that we get a random number for x2, which is going to be where it's spawning it. And then if that is more than 140, so if it's off the side of the screen, it's going to take 110 off. So that means that it's going to um, be a maximum of 255, so it'll be 145 will be the maximum there. And we do the same thing here. And the other thing is that because the Y, if that was zero, is actually going to drop the sprite off the screen. So we'll need to add 20 to the Y there. All right. So then put sprite there and turn on recording okay do a collision test and we don't need to use these symbols here so if a equals zero so if it's colliding instead of then do colon Right, take it away, turn off reporting, and go back to enemy spawn. And don't forget to end if. <coughs> okay, now if we're not in collision, then we'll give that sprite its direction. And then we'll set the status B e to 1 instead of saying uh, E status. And instead of saying return, we say end sub. Okay. Now the next one is going to be enemy check. Okay, so check if the missile <coughs> is hitting anything. If it's hit 11, then go sub enemy die. And then end if. Now 
do a collision test on one, so the player. And if the player has collided with something, then to player die. Term, we say n sub. Okay, so if the enemy is dying, we go enemy die. Explode the enemy. Okay, e status becomes e is now zero and reporting off for that. And n sub. <clears throat> and then we go player die, explode the player sprite, turn off recording for one, which I forgot to put there. Make sure we set E to zero, turn off recording for eleven and we take all the sprites off the screen. And instead of go to 290, we're going to say go to game start. So that is where it puts the player back and then starts the game going back. Okay, <clears throat> so we now have our .src file here. We'll put that into our disk. So we have our source file. We also have our drawing file here. Now we'll have to insert the sprites alive disk and run sprites, but instead of doing basic like we've been doing, we're going to hit C for compiler. So hit C. Okay, now it's going to ask us for some file names. First thing that I'm going to do is swap disks. So we'll go back to the disk that has our source file and drawing file on it. So source file is, oh, hang on. We'll need to rename this. Just realized that. Because we can't use an underscore in that name. So there we go. Demo 05. Demo 05. Drawing file is G A M E S P R T. Nodes file, we're going to ignore. Object file name, this is actually the output file. So let's call this demo 05. Line numbers, in this case, we don't have line numbers. Okay, we've already put the disk in, so let's go. Oh, and we've got a compiler error. Looks like I forgot to take out one of those commas. Just here. Okay. Reset. And try again. Okay, so we've gone through two passes of the compiler, means there's no obvious errors in our code. Okay, drawing data is on the same disk. Okay, and I'll reset before we run it, and we can see now we have demo 05, demo 05, SA1, and SA2. So these three files are our compiled game. So run demo 05. And there we go. And we can see now that the program is running much faster.
So once you've written a program in BASIC, I would actually recommend that you just use the compiler from the start for your subsequent programs. That way you uh, don't have to worry about converting your code every time. And you're going to get much better results. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.